Good morning, everyone, and welcome on this 24th Sunday of the year. The readings are powerful. The first reading taken from Exodus talks about the need for the people to repent. The second reading, Paul's letter, first letter to Timothy, talks about how he needed to repent. And then in the Gospel today, we have three parables. And somebody's phone is clearly rejoicing at the thought that we have three parables. There are three parables that talk about a response that God's part to repentance. You can guess what I'm going to talk about in the homily today. As we gather now, please stand, greet those around you. Let's get ready to pray.
Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it, and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone, then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O oh Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with such great power and with so strong a hand? Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus, our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these, I am the foremost. But for that reason, I was mercifully treated, so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the King of ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners, and he eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me! because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And then he said, a man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens 
who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. He longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat, but here am I dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up. He went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered the servants, quickly bring the finest robe, put it on him, put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet, take the fatted calf and slaughter it, then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fatted calf because he has him back, safe and sound. He became angry. When he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fatted calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The people in Exodus, they need to repent. St. Paul writes about how he stood in need of repentance. Three gospel uh, parables here talk about repentance. So I'm thinking, repentance. What do I have in my wheelhouse to talk about misery and suffering and sin and pain and hardship and sorrow and mistakes? And the answer is long division. You remember long division? Now, I'm talking old math here, not new math. I'm talking about when you had to take the number and put the little box around it, and then you had to put the number inside, and then you had to do the work. And I got all excited in elementary school because they gave us the answers at the back of the book. I got all jazzed about this thing. Hey, great. Until those well-remembered words show your work. You see, long division was really just the beginning of math, period, because we had to do it in algebra, we had to do it in trigonometry, we had to do it with proofs in geometry, we had to do it with calculus. I remember that you got all the answers. Just show how you got there. Now, maybe this didn't happen to you, but let's take division, for example, where, especially those, you know, 23,617, and then you got to divide into it like, you know, 82. And you start working the problem. And as you work the problem, lines and lines and lines and lines, this goes in, subtract, this goes in, subtract, this goes in. And you work the thing down and you get to the answer and you get all excited, you open the back of the book and you look and you're off by one. Just one. But the teacher says, sorry, find your error. And you have to start from the beginning. And it was really misery in elementary school when you found the error in line three. 
way up at the top because that meant you had to get the eraser out and you like I would erase so hard I'd start to tear the paper maybe that never happened to you but you know you, you got this whole sheet it would have been just easier to rework the whole thing on, on a fresh piece of paper but oh no we're gonna erase and write and erase and write because the problem is you have to go back to the mistake and fix it there wherever it is in the line wherever it shows up on the page you can't just go down and just make the quick change. You gotta show your work, which means that you find wherever the problem existed, where the mistake took place, and you build from there. It's true in the rest of math, that no matter how hard we try, you have to fix the mistake before you can continue. Welcome to repentance. Friends, you realize that in all of these scripture readings, what do we have? We have something broke down, something in our relationship with the Lord or one another. And because of that breakdown, that meltdown, that's the spot where repentance needs to take place. That's the spot where we begin to say, I have to fix it here. So that the rest of the life, the rest of the relationship, the rest of the situation can be healed, restored, and renewed. And we've been given this great gift throughout the scriptures. The calling back to repent. The calling back to recognize I've made a mistake. I'm on the wrong path. There's an error here and it's causing problems. Repentance is the way in which we get out a big eraser and say, okay, let's start here and rework the problem. Rework the situation in life. When we do that, we recognize that our lives get interwoven in so many different ways. And so sometimes there are possibilities that we have to use this gift of repentance to turn away from the problem, the mistake, the sin, so that we can be renewed and strengthened and whole. We can get back on the right track. We get back on the right path. Now, there's something really important about understanding why we repent. Why is this such a big deal to God? And we can talk about it, perhaps, about wrath. God will be angry. And yes, sin displeases the Lord, there's no doubt. But the, the parables that we have in the Gospel of Luke give us an insight into why repentance is so important. It's not God's wrath. It's God's compassion. For God so loved the world, he sent his Son to get us back on the right track. And these three parables that we have, the shepherd who chases down the lost sheep, the woman who searches the whole house until she finds that lost coin. This is how God looks for us when we get lost, when we get off the track. God doesn't give up, but out of compassion, out of a mercy, out of a desire to make things right, God reaches out to us and all heaven rejoices when we repent. The rejoicing happens because we're restored, we're renewed, we're open to grace, we can be healed and made whole. That the rejoicing of heaven happens in the sight of repentance because the life, the gift that we've been given from God is now been reborn again and allowed to receive the grace that God lavishes upon us. We get to shine and that's cause for rejoicing because when we get off on that wrong path, God's grace is diminished within us. Our soul contracts. Our spirit is weakened. The Lord longs for us to be made whole, to flourish, to thrive. We see this in a beautiful way with the final parable, the prodigal son. You realize this kid did everything wrong. This younger son, there's nothing good here to stand on. Every aspect of this was a hot mess with one exception. He repented. He came to his senses. He realized just what kind of train wreck was going on. And at that moment, amazing things happened. The father runs to his kid. He didn't sit back saying, hey, I've been waiting long enough. You don't get that. He runs to him, embraces him, throws a party. My kid was dead, he's now back to life. Folks, would that we recognize this is how the Lord looks at us when we repent. That the Lord runs to us when we recognize the sin 
and return to Christ, runs to us, embraces us. This is a God who, out of compassion, reaches out to us. This is the God who wants us to be restored, renewed, and healed. This is why repentance is so crucial. And when the older son got angry and did sit back and pout, the father runs to him too. God doesn't give up on us. And so the call to repentance is a call to restoration and renewal, to throw open the gates of our hearts to let God's grace come in. Because when we don't repent, when we hold on to old hurt, old sin, old pain, it's like our fist is wrapped so tight around something that when the Lord comes, we can't grab hold of his hand. And it's only when through repentance we recognize that all of that was wrong, that our hand is opened up so the Lord can take it and lead us into light. The question then today is this, what is it we gotta repent of? Where are the mistakes? Where are the errors that we have to go back to and work through? Where are the breakdowns, the meltdowns in our lives, our relationships with one another, with the Lord? We got the sacrament of reconciliation. We have opportunities while we draw breath to look one another in the eye and say, I'm sorry, I love you, I forgive you, can I help you? May we take the gift to heart today. May we turn away from whatever is drawing us off the wrong path so that we can encounter the Lord's love and grace. For as we heard in that second reading, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He came to save us. That requires us to look into our hearts, review perhaps what needs to be repented, so we can turn to him for the strength and grace we need. God bless you all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us now present to the Lord our needs and our prayers. For the church, her leaders, and all the faithful, that all may be blessed with wisdom and devotion, we pray to the Lord. That those who hold public office will imitate the goodness of God who secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed, we pray to the Lord. For special blessings on husbands and wives, that their marriages will witness to the goodness of the gospel and bless their families, we pray to the Lord. That the dignity of human life will be protected in our laws, we pray to the Lord. For the grace this week to repent and to be open to the mercy of Christ, we pray to the Lord. 
that the Holy Spirit will guide the preparations for the World Synod, we pray to the Lord. For an end to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, Ben Johnson, we pray to the Lord. For all of you at home, for the prayers you offer in the comment line, and for all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. 
May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, James our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. safe from all distress and useless worry as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Some announcements. The priest retreat for the Diocese of Superior begins tomorrow morning, and so there will be in our cluster no daily Mass on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. It's kind of a, a new era for me, having had the blessing of Father Lee Flaherty for so many years in our parish cluster to be able to have daily Mass when we were called away for diocesan events. So I, I spoke with Father Lee the other day, and we miss him, but folks, Keep all the priests in your prayers uh, this week. Uh, there will be daily Mass here at the Cathedral on Friday, but nothing on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. The Alpha Course began last week, and it's going to be starting tonight out at Lake Nebagaman. We're running it on Thursdays and Sundays at 6 p.m. Thursdays here at Cathedral, Sundays at St. Anthony and Lake Nebagaman. There's still time to join this coming week. Uh, we if you haven't done it, we want to invite you to. Uh, otherwise, we're excited about the start of this new sequence. You don't have to cook today. Instead, go out to St. William's. Uh, I got a couple of ham bones in my freezer right now. We were, they were carving up meat yesterday. It smells really good over there. I had mass last night for the workers, and they're all fired up to have a beautiful, we got a beautiful day and a beautiful dinner. I certainly want to invite folks to head on out to St. William's. You can either get takeouts or you can dine in, but a beautiful meal in store. Religious education, we need to get people to make sure they're signed up. We're doing it all online. You can pull out the uh, bulletin. There's a QR code. Click on it. It'll take you right to it. You can also do it online. After Mass today, I will be right down here for anyone who wishes to receive the anointing of the sick, as we do that every month. I just want to make that sacrament available to folks for any healing at all, body, mind, heart, and soul. Here at the cathedral, on the third Sunday of every month, we do put out baskets and invite folks who wish to support the local food shelf. Uh, we're doing that through the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, but certainly if you have non-perishable items, once a month, just note that the baskets will be out on the third Sunday of the month so that we can help those we're going hungry. Finally, the World Synod Prayer. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name with you alone to guide us. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. But let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every time and place, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.